Today we're driving the 2021 Lexus LX570. 13 years, that's how long the LX570 has been out. It's gone through a couple refreshes, a couple updates, a couple facelifts, but really, this is the same car that came out in 2008, and uh, it's still one of the best luxury off-roaders out there if you want capability and comfort and reliability. If you want tech, forget about it. This does not have anything for you. It doesn't even have Apple CarPlay in 2021, but that's not what this LX570 is about. This is basically the Lexus version of the Toyota Land Cruiser. We've got a bunch more features, a bunch more creature comforts in here. Starting price isn't really that much more expensive than the Land Cruiser. This starts around $90,000. It has a 5.7 liter V8, makes 383 horsepower. That V8's mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission. It's full-time four-wheel drive. You've got four high, four low, crawl control, trail turn assist, which the Bronco has, a locking center differential, and automatic height control. This electronic hydraulically operated height control system in this Land Cruiser LX is pretty awesome. It can slam to the ground when you park it for easier access in and out of the vehicle, or you can raise it up for some serious off-roading. Besides the 20 inch wheels and the uh, highway cruising tires on this LX, this is about as off-road ready as it gets in the luxury SUV space. I don't know why Lexus puts 20 inch wheels on their uh, luxury flagship off-road SUV, but maybe it says a little bit about the customers that buy this thing. One of the most controversial things about the LX570 has always been how it looks, and uh, this late model here is probably one of the most controversial, especially with the grill. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, though I will say in this black, it does look pretty sharp. We've already had this off-road a little bit. Be sure to keep an eye out for that on the Winding Road YouTube channel. I do like this LX all blacked out. It'll look pretty mean with some slightly larger wheels and tires, or slightly smaller wheels, larger tires. Let's take a look in the back here. We've got the signature split tailgate that we've always seen in the LX and Land Cruiser. Nice little shelf right here where you can sit down. You've got a couple of cargo spaces in here where you can put stuff, and you can fold up and down the third row of seats using these buttons right here. There's a little bit of room in this third row. It's usable in a pinch, but the seats are positioned so low that adults might be a little bit cramped back there. So if you wanna fold this third row in, you just push all the buttons, up it goes, and you've got a decent amount of cargo space back here. You can always take these seats out if you're not gonna use them or opt for the two row LX570 but the extra versatility from the third row is nice in this full-size LX. In the second row, the back seats, you can move these forward and back. You can adjust the tilt angle of your backrest. You've got a nice grab handle to get up in and a step. Very useful for those off-road situations when you're in full high. We have heated and cooled rear seats, automatic rear climate control, a little bit of storage space, and some cup holders right here in the center. And you'll notice the second row has stadium seating. You can see slightly over the front seats. We also get a rear sunshade and just a lot of great materials. The build quality, the fit, the finish, the materials, the level of luxury and comfort in here is pretty awesome. This is Lexus's flagship SUV and it looks the part. Still in 2021, Lexus has done a great job updating this. Before we hop in the front seat, let me show you under the hood. This 5.7 liter V8 is rated for 12 miles to the gallon in the city, 14 miles to the gallon combined, though you'll struggle to average over 13 in this thing. It is a very, very thirsty engine, but incredibly smooth, incredibly reliable. It's a beast. All right, let's hop up front and show you guys some more features on this LX570. So the first thing you notice when you get into this is just how massive it is. This is one of the larger cockpits of any vehicle on the road. That other door pillar just seems like it's miles away and you're in the cabin with a passenger You've got your own armrest with plenty of room to move about. A lot of controls, a lot of buttons, a lot of switches. 
you really feel like you're in something special when you sit down in this cockpit. We have wireless charging right here, a couple of cup holders, the electronic parking brake, the shifter with a pretty old looking reverse camera, but it does have 360 view, which is nice. Heated and cooled seats with a heated steering wheel and crawl control, multi-terrain select, all the off-road tech you could want in your LX570. We also get the old school mouse or joystick, whatever you want to call it, to control the infotainment. This is one of the last Lexus vehicles with this, or maybe even the last with this. They've transitioned everything else over to the touchpad, which actually, after using this, I kind of prefer. This is, uh, this is pretty rough, you guys. There's not a whole lot to do in here. I've connected my phone to Bluetooth, so we'll do a little bit of a Mark Levinson sound system test in this, but I will fully expect the next generation, 2022-23 LX570, to come with a suite of modern technology with regards to infotainment. However, this LX570 does have a lot of physical controls and buttons to make up for where it lacks in the infotainment realm. We don't have to go into the screen for climate control for a lot of these physical controls here. I like that. This is still a very usable SUV. In the center, we've got a digital gauge cluster with a few different menus. I mean, all the same basic stuff. There's your fuel economy. You don't want to look at that too much. We'll leave it on our speed. We've got a head-up display, which is probably kind of hard to see right now in broad daylight, but it's there. Pretty much turns invisible when you put sunglasses on like most of them with the polarized light. I have no idea what this button does. Uh, there's auto high beams, headlamp washers, you have three memory seat settings, and all of your window and mirror controls over here to the left. We still get Lexus's old school cruise control stock, which I love. It's ergonomically just about perfect. You can do lane keep assist or following distance control right there. We'll test that out a little bit later on the highway. Let me show you guys the difference in suspension height with this automatic height control system. So we're going to slam it to the ground, do the lowest setting, and show you guys what it looks like when you park this at the lowest height. You can hear the system lowering right now. It slams to the ground. It gets pretty low. All right, so remember what that looks like. Super easy to get in and out of. And then we're gonna lift it up to its maximum settings. There's only three settings, low, normal, and high. The idea behind this hydraulic suspension system is that it reduces pitch, roll under hard cornering, but also allows for maximum articulation off-road. It works in combination with KDSS, the Kinetic Dynamic Sway Bar System in this LX570. And it also can level out the vehicle when it's parked. So if you've got a rooftop tent, you're taking this overlanding, and you don't want to necessarily have as much of a tilt with your campsite, you can level this out on rough terrain to an extent. And uh, that's pretty nice. It works wonders off-road. You get a ton of ground clearance, even with this lower front bumper on these newer 21 models. You get a great approach angle, a lot of breakover angle, and your departure angle looks pretty good too, aside from the mud flaps. This thing is just about all the off-road capability that you need with regards to ground clearance, breakover angle, and capability, but yet you can take it out on the road, slam it down to the ground. It's easy to get in and out of. Very versatile. This maximum lifted height will turn off at around 30 miles per hour, or uh, it'll automatically engage when you put it in four low. Speaking of four low, you engage that by putting the vehicle in neutral, switch down there into four low, and you can go into multi-terrain select, which is super cool. So we've got a bunch of different options here. VSC is turned off, multi-terrain select is in rock right now. You can do mud sand, loose rock, mogul, rock and dirt, and rock. And that basically just controls the traction control. Lexus and Toyota have always had amazing traction control systems that kind of make sure all the wheels are spinning when they need to be. Multi-terrain select is basically just cruise control for all four of your wheels. It keeps everything spinning at the same speed. It almost acts like a locking front and rear differential. Incredibly effective off-road. So we'll put us back into neutral, go back into four high. We're in a parking lot. We don't need four low. And we don't really have any good off-road testing areas out here right now. So we're just going to be doing a street drive of this LX570 today. All right, you also get a trail camera that pops up when you put it into four low, showing you some blind spots in your corners, which is pretty nice. Let's go into the menu and just uh, look at this screen. We've got a couple different options to the right here with a split screen. You can see your compass, your latitude, longitude, your phone, 
fuel economy, which I would not recommend looking at, or your climate control. That seems like a nice display to leave this on. We're still in full high mode, and as we accelerate, everything will lower down to normal. This is such an imposing looking SUV set to its maximum ride height. There's something very comforting knowing that this has all the off-road capability you would pretty much ever need from the factory. The advantage to this LX, reliability. There's a reason why this has been on sale for 13 years and they haven't changed much. It's just a formula that works. Before this was the LX470 and before that was the LX450 in the 90s. We have a long lineage of Land Cruisers and LXs that this LX570 has been built upon and they will continue to build upon in the next generation. So how does this LX570 drive? Well, it's heavy and it feels it. The electronic suspension does do a pretty good job hiding some of the weight in this LX, but it doesn't do all of it. This is still a behemoth on the road. Let's do a quick brake test. A lot of nose dive. <laughs> It's not that fast either. This 5.7 liter V8 is the epitome of understressed overbuilt. Pretty decent turning radius though, that's good. Let's put it into, <laughs> this has a sport and sport plus mode. Let's put it into sport plus and see what happens. And there's 60. Definitely looking forward to what the new 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 does in terms of acceleration. I will miss the sound of this V8 though. <laughs> it is a fun body on frame SUV to hustle around though. It's about as capable as it could be given its weight, its size, its off-road prowess. And it can do just about everything you need to. It'll tow, I'm not exactly sure what the tow rating is. You can fill it with people and stuff. Really, the only cons here, tech and, of course, fuel economy. We'll put us back into comfort mode, which is about the most frequently used mode that I've been you driving in it this week. It also has an eco mode, but why even bother? Very quiet at speed, really nice ride quality. You can definitely tell this is a body on frame SUV with the way it corners, the way it goes over bumps, but still it's very comfortable and very luxurious. This eight speed automatic does a nice job choosing gears. Throttle tip in sometimes can be a little bit aggressive, especially off the line, but once you kind of calibrate your brain to the tuning of everything, you can drive this very smoothly. I love the soundtrack of this V8 in the background. It's subtle, it's silent, it's subdued, and you even get paddle shifters. <laughs> rev to fuel cut off. Oh yeah. Actually not bad. Not bad. Definitely handles a lot better than the Land Cruiser. The electronic and hydraulic suspension in this helps quite a bit with that. It's kind of the difference between the 4Runner and the GX460. 
though the GX has electronically controlled dampers and rear air suspension, whereas this LX570 does not have air suspension, uh, contrary to what some people may say or believe. At speed, super comfortable. I mean, this is just a luxury barge. You could eat up the miles in this thing. You'll be gulping fuel and spending a lot of money on gas, but oh, you would be doing it in complete luxury and comfort and having a good time at it. Let's try out cruise control here on the highway. We've got radar cruise, lane keep assist. It'll kind of do a decent job centering us in the lane. Let's see here. Or is it just a, uh, it's just gonna beep. It's not even gonna actively steer. This probably has, still has hydraulic steering actually. Cruise control seems to work okay. I mean, you know, it's just, this is an old school system. It's, I'm sure it's been updated in one of the later uh, refreshes and facelifts, but it is what it is. We will definitely see a more modern iteration of the LX570 coming next year. <laughs> the, dive, the nose dive under braking is hilarious. <laughs> I do like driving this LX. It is fun, it is enjoyable, it is hugely capable. It's a little bit big, but you kind of know that going in. I owned a GX460, a 2012 for four years almost, three, four years, and I loved that GX because it was kind of the perfect size. You could park it in a parking structure, you could take it into the city, parallel park it. It didn't feel like it was too massive. I spent a week taking a Land Cruiser out to Pittsburgh over a weekend, and in a city, it was just too large. It was really tight, some gaps were just too narrow for this massive width and uh, that's I feel the same way about this LX if that's not as much of an issue if you've got a city vehicle to take out to town or you know you just need the capability of this thing you don't really care about the size then go for it this is an awesome option still in 2021 yes there's a lot going on here that needs to be refreshed and changed but you can even get one of these second hand for in the mid 20s with a lot of miles on it and I wouldn't think twice about buying a high mileage LX. As long as it's been reasonably well maintained and cared for, the automatic height control suspension does need servicing every now and then. Um, so that's something that you'll definitely wanna find a specialist shop to do. I don't know if I'd take it to a Lexus dealer, you'll probably get charged an arm and a leg. And then there's also the LX470, which is kind of becoming a modern classic in uh, some corners of the Land Cruiser world. This though, I think this LX570 takes it to another level from what previous LXs have over the Toyota Land Cruiser. <laughs> so we go back into Sport Plus mode with paddle shifters. The LX and Land Cruiser used to struggle a little bit with uh, steering transitions, quick transitions. This seems to be a little bit improved with that regard. I'm sure those 21 inch wheels help a little bit with handling. beast super comfortable off-road really smooth on rough pavement dirt roads you can rock crawl you can do some high speed off-roading in this thing and it can still hold its own let's see how we do around this entrance ramp in sport plus the brakes are nice and strong that is refreshing <laughs> on power you can really feel this the steering stiffen up it's like that front axle when it's engaged under power really kind of is giving you some resistance in the wheel <laughs> well like i said fun to drive hugely capable laughable tech 
but still I think there's a there's a real appeal to this LX570. I will miss the V8 when the 2022 comes out with a 3.5 liter V6. Maybe we'll see some type of mild hybrid iteration too. Who knows? Can't imagine what something like that would weigh. But there's no doubt that the LX570 will go down as one of the more legendary off-road cable SUVs. The fact that this brings all this luxury, all these amenities, all this comfort to the table and the way that it does, I think is reason alone to consider one of these. I would 100% take something like this over an Escalade or a Lincoln Navigator. I mean, if you're really going to be using it for its intended purpose, for adventure, for daily use, for long road trips, for towing, for hauling people and stuff, and it's not just your, you know, mall crawler that you're going to be driving around alone in, get one of these because it's, it's a pretty awesome package. If you really need Apple CarPlay and you really need all the tech, then yeah, wait for the 2022s to come out. But as it sits, picking up a used LX is probably not a terrible buy. Let's see how radar guided cruise control does around these slower vehicles. So we're going to merge over. Yeah, it's going to take its sweet time to get up to speed here. It's going to accelerate very slowly, but it works. If you're on a long road trip, something like this could take a little bit of the edge off and uh, reduce your fatigue. I just love how comfortable and how quiet this is at speed. Even 80, 90 miles an hour, this thing is solid. While we're just cruising, let's try to go in and attempt to do a sound system test. So we'll find our source. We've got our Bluetooth device. All right, let's see what it's like. Mark Levinson. We have a nice selection of physical controls on the steering wheel to raise and lower volume, change tracks. Easy access to our sound controls. All right, guys, well, there's the Lexus LX570, probably one of the last drives we'll get in one of these things, unless if we test some Overlander modified version of it. Um, pretty cool SUV, definitely something that I would consider owning someday if it weren't so big, but I just love that you have all the capability you could use or need from something like this straight out of the factory. You don't need to go and throw a lift on it. Pretty much all you gotta do is put some better all-terrain tires, maybe some slightly smaller wheels, and you are set to go anywhere in your LX570. So anyway, guys, that's gonna be a wrap for this one. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. 
Stay tuned on the Winding Road Magazine and Daily Motor YouTube channels for more driving content on this LX570. I think Charlie's got a pretty nice off-road video with some high-speed driving, low-speed driving in his off-road test route. He got this thing super dirty earlier this week, and uh, I just cleaned it off for the on-road mall crawl drive that we've had today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.